Well, hello again. Thanks for taking the time to tune into my YouTube channel. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of classic 60s British Villiers engined machines. Now, the first bike we'll be looking at will be Ian Ward's uh, 250 Villiers Sprite. And uh, later in the video, we'll then have a look at Robert Kennedy's uh, Cotton Star Maker. So we'll uh, get things going with uh, Ian Ward's 1966 250 uh, Villiers Sprite. Now Ian's bike, uh, as you can see here, uh, it still has the original uh, Villiers uh, frame and engine, although Ian has made uh, some modifications to the frame and the swing arm uh, just to basically suit his uh, own particular uh, style of riding. Now the engine of this uh, 250 Villiers Sprite is a mix of parts taken from the 32A and 36A series of uh, Villiers engines. Now the chosen colour scheme uh, may not be to everybody's uh, liking, although uh, this is Ian's very own uh, personal uh, choice of colours for his race bike. Now Ian from Middlesbrough in the south of the UK races his bike with the Scottish Classic Motorcycle Club's uh, Scrambles Championship. And of course this bike is raced in the pre-1968 up to 350cc class. Now this is very much a work in progress type of machine. Uh, Ian tells me that he is uh, constantly changing parts of the bike and uh, updating things to make it a more rider friendly experience. And this uh, bike took Ian to a top 3 championship finish uh, in 2017. Now this modern Makuni carburetor of course is not the original fitment for this engine. I think these bikes originally had the old uh, Amel carburetors. Now, as we said earlier, Ian did modify the swing arm, but this was purely to improve the geometry of the bike. And that's the original uh, Villiers uh, fuel tank that was uh, supplied with the chassis. Now, although these Villiers engines have uh, aluminium barrels, if uh, I can remember correctly, I'm sure they had a cast iron liner inside for the, the piston barrel. Now this lovely aluminium airbox uh, was another one of uh, Ian's engineering improvements to the bike. Of course these are not the original shocks, these are a more uh, modern uprated set of Falcon shocks on the rear. Yes, I'm sure that these engines would have been originally fitted with an old Amel monoblock or concentric carburetor. Now Ian tells me that the bike was uh, absolutely flawless on the racetrack uh, during uh, last year's campaign and he's hoping of course that uh, the bike will stay reliable during this uh, year's 2018 championship. Now a very substantial rear sprocket on uh, Ian's bike here to uh, put the power down from that 250 Villiers engine. But as we said earlier, this is very much a work-in-progress machine. Now some of the other upgrades Ian made to the bike was to remove the original forks and fit a new set of forks complete with the front hub from a Suzuki 125. And naturally these uh, Suzuki 125 forks would be a much uh, better quality front end on this bike than was uh, originally fitted. Now the fork gaiters and the front and rear fenders are all standard off-the-shelf uh, motocross items. Of course these uh, 250 Villiers engines were also used in a variety of other uh, competition machines including trials bikes and uh, go-karts. Now all the plastics on Ian's bike are the original uh, fitments 
uh, we can see the uh, Falcon rear shocks. Now this seat, uh, as far as I'm aware, was uh, recovered using the original seat base. Now the rather unorthodox uh, blue and red paint job may not be to everybody's liking, but of course this is Ian's very own interpretation of what his bike should look like. Well there you have it, that's Ian Ward's 1966 Villiers 250 Sprite. Now we've had a quick look at the bike itself, let's uh, see if we can just uh, have a listen to see what she sounds like. Now we're going to take a look at uh, Robert Kennedy's 1965 250 Cotton Star Maker. Now these uh, Villiers uh, Star Maker engines were introduced in 1962. Of course these Villiers motors were not just used in scramblers, they were popular uh, road racing motors back in the day. And during 1962 to 1964, these cottons won a substantial amount of racing during those uh, two years. The Cotton Motor Company, of course, was founded in 1918 by Frank uh, Willoughby Cotton until the factory closed uh, in 1980. Now, this Star Maker motorcycle was designed by the company's then uh, motorcycle designers Bernard Hooper and John Favell. Now Bernard was the uh, two-stroke engine specialist and John Favell who was uh, he was the recognized expert who specialized in the gears and transmissions. Now in 1965 these machines were fitted with a four-speed uh, close ratio gearbox although uh, there was an option for a six-speed gearbox, but uh, although these were mainly used for the road racing guys. Now the Cotton Motorcycle Company of course used these Villiers engines uh, in their machines, although uh, in later years Villiers then withdrew the supply of these uh, engines to Cotton's, so uh, Cotton had to shop around for uh, another engine supplier and uh, eventually went with the Minarelli engine in subsequent models. Now this bike as far as I know is at least a 99% original 250 Star Maker machine. Of course in their day these bikes were very very quick and very light. Now magneto ignitions were also fitted to these uh, Villiers motors with the usual energizing coils carried on the stator plate. This of course transferred the current to an external coil which was uh, usually mounted on the frame just under the tank. Now the compression ratio of these Villiers engines was around 12.1 uh, and uh, on their day they were putting out uh, about 25 brake horsepower. Now these Villiers engines also came originally fitted with the 389 AML monoblock carburetor. Although a lot of uh, riders decided to uh, replace these uh, AML units for a more modern, uh, uh, fuel efficient and tunable uh, Japanese unit. The gearboxes on these Villiers engines had a good uh, reputation for being tough and uh, very reliable. 
Now on the transmission side of the engine, the clutch had a diaphragm spring that had two sintered bronze friction plates with one steel intermediate plate. Now although the clutch had a very high spring pressure, they were still surprisingly light to operate with mild finger pressure at the lever. Now of the uh, famous riders who rode these particular machines, uh, one uh, British rider springs to mind uh, of course is Andy Robertin who rode one of these machines in 1967. Okay, there we have it then. That's uh, Robert Kennedy's 1965 250 Star Maker. Let's have a quick uh, listen to see what the old girl just sounds like. 